obviously it required a complete response uh, to develop a prevention campaign. And so the plan was to put all of that together as part of the National AIDS Task Force. There was a Grim Reaper campaign went on the television. Subsequently it's been widely criticised as being inaccurate. You know, hundreds of thousands of people in, or 100,000 people infected and what have you. Well, that wasn't the case by a long shot. But the role of it was to grab the attention of the population and it certainly did that. And it helped secure a reasonable budget with which to respond to the epidemic. Particularly in the early days, the Australian response was regarded as one of the best in the world. Uh, and it was controversial as it is. Uh, has been all around the world. It needn't be. It wasn't to me. It was I'm a scientist and if I was in the business of being a health minister I knew I had a job to do and I just got on with it. It was nothing to do with re religion, which for a lot of people it was for some reason or another. It's something to do with the book of Leviticus or something. A community-based approach was taken so it the, there was a, an understanding at the highest levels in the Federal Health Department that, and some other state to health departments, although I don't think it happened in Queensland for many years, um, that if the principal affected community wasn't involved, then any efforts would fail. The principal strategy in the earliest days was to convince a group of highly sexualised, or mostly highly sexualised, uh, men um, who had, had, hadn't had to worry about the um, consequences of um, sexual activity until then. The, the strategy was to convince them to use condoms and, and to use them properly and to use them every time. It was a remarkably successful campaign. If you look at some of the earliest health promotion, behaviour altering um, campaigns that were implemented in the gay community, they were very sexually explicit and would even now probably be categorised as pornography. Images that were familiar to gay men were often drawn on um, to carry information about the infection and the, it, how to avoid it or, or and what have you. So talking intimately and in a in an accepted way to men about how they make sexual choices and how they perform sexual acts and so on, just was never going to get to wash if it was being done by the federal government who couldn't use appropriate language, let alone uh, speak with confidence about any of the, the topics that needed to be addressed. And it still doesn't happen. I mean, the government just, um, commissions appropriate groups to do that sort of work and so the general it happens and the general public never see it